Hello everyone and welcome to Fatma Sami's channel. Today's video is for the 6th grade semester 1. We're gonna do some exercises on unit 4 class book. Unit 4 survival. Exercise number 1. Read, think and answer. Do you remember in unit 1 Ahmed told you that his friend David visited him in Oman? Look at this email from David to a friend about his holiday and answer these questions. Let's read the email. Dear Ben, I arrived back in Australia today. I left Oman two days ago. It took a long time to travel home. I went to Oman to visit Ahmed. It was great. I stayed in Oman for two weeks and did lots of ex exciting things. On my first day, we went on a boat trip to see the dolphins. I took lots of photographs. The next day, we visited Jibreen Fort in the morning. It was fantastic. In the afternoon, we went shopping and I bought some postcards. The day after that, we drove up to Jabal Akhtar. It was amazing. We saw a helicopter taking food and materials to the villages at the top of the mountain. The most exciting part of my holiday started the next day. Ahmed's brother Ali said he would take us into the desert to look for oryx. We had a real adventure. To find out what happened, read my story, Ahmed and David's amazing advent adventure. I really loved Oman. I want to go back again someday. Hope you are okay. David. Now, let's read the questions and answer them. Number 1. Where David today? In Australia. Number 2. Where was David last week? In Oman. Number 3. Why did they go to the desert? To see Oryx. Exercise number two. Read and answer. Do you remember in unit one, Ahmed told you that he and his friend David had a great adventure? Read the story of Ahmed and David's amazing adventure and answer this question. Number one. Where did they go? To the desert. Number two. What happened? They had an accident. Number three. How did they make water? Ali collected some plants and put them in a plastic bags and tied them well. Then he put them in the sun. So the water comes out of the plants. Number four. How did they signal for help? They used a torch to ask for help using Morse code. Now let's read Ahmed and David's amazing adventure. David was very excited. He and Ahmed and Ahmed's brother Ali were going on a trip to the desert to look for Oryx. Ali worked for an organization called Save the Oryx. He often went into the desert to see how many Oryx there were and to check if there were any problems with them. Before they left home, Ali gave his dad a map. The map showed where they were going. He told his dad they would be home in three days. Time. Ali and the two boys got into the car and started their journey. They drove out of the town and after a few hours reached the desert. They started driving up and down the sand dunes. David began to feel very sleepy. He was very tired after the long flight from Australia. Suddenly, David woke up. Everything was upside down. His hair and clothes were wet. He heard Ali asking, David, are you okay? Can you climb out? He saw Ali, who was upside down outside the car. How strange, he thought. He looked again. Ahmed was upside down too. David undid his seat belt 
and climbed out the window. He fell into the soft sand. It was very hot. What happened? David asked. We had an accident while you were sleeping, explaining Ali. I was driving across sand dune when suddenly we had a puncture, and the car rolled over. Is everybody okay? Asked Ali. David and Ahmed, no deed. David wiped his face with his wet T-shirt. They sat in silence. They were all very scared. They were in the middle of the desert, and their car was upside down. After a while, Ali said, "Well, there is no need to panic. At least, we've got fifty liters of." He stopped talking. They looked at David's wet T-shirt and his wet hair. David jumped up and looked inside the car. "Oh no!" he cried. The water containers have broken. They checked the water containers and found that there was a little water left in each one. They drank some of the water and saved the rest for later. I'm hungry," said Ahmed. Ali suggested that Ahmed and David should look for the food from the car while he put up the tent. Then, they sat inside the tent, and ate some of the food. They talked about what they should do next. Maybe one of us should go and look for help," suggested David. "No," said Ali. "It's very hot, and you will need to drink lots of water if you walk now. We should rest here until someone rescues us. Dad will send someone to look for us. It's really important that we stay together by the car. Can we survive for three days without water?" asked David. I hope so," Ali said. The sun was very hot. Ali told the boys to stay in the tent and rest. He had an idea. He went to the car and found some empty plastic bags. He pulled some little green plants out of the sand and put them inside the plastic bags. He blew some air into the bags, tied them tightly, and left them in the sun. Later, the sun went down and the moon came up. Soon, the sky was full of stars. They were all hungry and they ate a little more food. Then they drank a few sips of the water that was left in the containers. I wish we had more water," said Ahmed. Ali went to the plastic bags. He opened them carefully and took out the little plants. Then. He poured some water out of each bag into the cups. "Whoa," said David. "How did you do that?" Ali smiled and told them how he did it. They drank the water. It tasted wonderful. Suddenly, Ali pointed to the sky and shouted, "Look, an airplane!" "Great," said David. "Let's try using the Morse code." He quickly took out his torch. And sig- signaled S O S to the airplane, but the airplane didn't see them and flew away. Let's take turns to stay awake tonight, Ali said. Then, if an airplane flies over, we can try and signal them again. The boys fell asleep, and Ali stayed awake, looking out for an airplane in the sky. When Ahmed and David woke up, the sun was rising. Suddenly, Ali saw something moving in the sand a few meters away. There was just enough light in the sky to see, an oryx. It was standing right in front of them. David was very excited and wanted to take a photograph of the oryx. He quietly picked up his camera and took a photograph. Click, flash. The oryx turned around and quickly ran away. Soon, the sun was high in the sky, and it was very hot again. The boys collected more plants and put them in the plastic bags. It got hotter and hotter. They drank all the water from the plastic bags, but they were still thirsty. 
They tried to go to sleep again to save their energy. Suddenly, they heard a noise. They ran out of the tent and looked up. It was a helicopter. They jumped up and down and waved, but the helicopter didn't see them. What shall we do? cried Ahmed. We need a mirror, shouted Ali. Ahmed looked around and saw the mirror from the side of the car in the sand. He quickly picked it up. Then he held the mirror so that the sunlight reflected of it and flashed towards the helicopter. They all watched the helicopter. Had it seen their signal? Ahmed flashed the mirror towards the helicopter again. Slowly, it turned in a big circle and flew back towards them. The boys jumped up and down excitedly. We're saved! Hooray! They shouted. Exercise number one. Listen and find. Listen to this radio program. You will hear people talking about things that you need to take on a trip to the desert to make sure you are safe. Listen carefully and take the things you hear described. Welcome to our weekly travel program. This week, we're going to look at traveling into the desert. There are many items you should take with you when you go on a trip into the desert to make sure that you have a happy and safe experience. I'll begin by telling you about a few of the most important pieces of equipment that you need to take. You should take a compass. You should take a spad. You should take some matches. You should take a torch. You should take a tent. You should take water containers with lots of drinking water. These are just a few things you should take. Of course, there are many others. Now, let's see the answers. Exercise number two, read and match. Look at the pictures above. Match each picture to one of these words. Let's see the answers. Number one, a plastic sheet. Number two, a knife. Number three, candles. Number four, a fishing rod. Number five, a ladder. Number six, a canvas. Number seven, some rope. Number eight, a tent. Number nine, a mirror. Number ten, some wire. Eleven, anchor. Twelve, a hammer and some nails. Thirteen, some string. 14. A spad. 15. A torch. 16. A water container. 17. A telescope. 18. An axe. 19. A magnifying glass. 20. Some safety pins. 21. Some matches. 22. Scissors. Exercise number three. Listen and talk. Listen to these children making suggestions for the things they need to take on a trip to the desert. We should take a campus. We should take some water. Now, work with a partner and take it in turns to make suggestions about the things you should take on a trip to the desert. Find the picture of the things that your partner suggests. Exercise number one. Listen and match. Do you remember the story of Robinson Crusoe? What things did he use to help him survive on the island? Imagine that you are on a ship that is sinking. You have enough time to take some things from the ship to the island. What things would you take? Listen to these people deciding what to take. Match each suggestion to a replay. Let's see the answers. Number one, matches B. We should take a box of matches. I don't agree. Number two, matches C. We should take a spad. I'm not sure. Number three, matches A. We should take a knife. That's a good idea. Exercise number two, read and match. 
Look at these suggestions. Match each suggestion to a reason. Let's see the answers. A matches four. We should take a box of matches. Why? Because we could light a fire. B matches number three. We should take a fishing road because we could catch some fish to eat. C matches number five. We should take a hammer and nails because we could build a shelter. D matches two. We should take an axe because we could cut wood to make a fire. E matches number one. We should take a torch because we could see in the dark. Exercise number one. Read, think and discuss. Imagine that you are shipwrecked with 20 other people of all ages. You are on a desert island. You will not be rescued for a long time. In your groups, discuss what you should do to survive. Look at the ideas on page 39 and decide. Number one, which things you should do in the first few days. Number two, which things you should do later, after a few weeks. Number three, which things you should do a lot later, after a few months. Exercise number two, organize your ideas. When you have decided in your groups which of these things you should do first and then later and then a lot later, write them in the spaces below. Do you have any other ideas about what you should do to survive? Write them in the empty island at the bottom of page 39 and then Add them to the list below. This is page 39, where you should write your ideas below. Now, let's read the rest of the ideas. Find or make shelters. Collect wood to make a fire. Choose leaders. Make boats for fishing. Explore the island. Find fresh water. Ask if there is a doctor or a nurse. Look for animals that give milk and eggs. Find food. Agree who is to do what jobs. Stay together in one place. Find out what skills people have. Check for dangerous animals. Agree rules. Exercise number one. Play the island survival game. Can you find your way to the rescue ship? Follow the instructions and find your way home. This game is divided into two pages, page 40 and page 41. Play with a friend and follow the instructions of the game to win. We have reached to the end of our video. Thank you for listening and watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.